There does not appear to be a crime scene weapon. There doesn't appear to be any admissions or statements against penal interest. Uh, there's no body. Um, what we have is a suspicious disappearance and, a, and a, an entirely circumstantial case. When I say I'm relieved, I'm not being cocky. Mm. Fotis Dulos, attorney, speaking there after his client posted his bond yesterday. Now he's under house arrest awaiting trial on murder charges. His ex-girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, also posted bond and was taken to the hospital feeling unwell. So what is next for Dulos? Criminal defense attorney David Bruno joins us to hear the lawyer lay it out. No weapon, no body. They don't have anything. When you drill down a little bit on, on the evidence, as we've followed the case, they have all kinds of stuff. The nanny's saying, I just restocked the cabinet with paper towels. They were all gone immediately. I mean, what other kind of stuff do they have? Sure. I mean, the attorney did mention circumstantial evidence, and sometimes circumstantial evidence could be more uh, persuasive than direct. Like what? what it's they the have? forensics yeah. on this case. I mean, what, what great police work. There's a 38-page affidavit for arrest. It's a capital murder charge. And by the way, it just details all these steps that this defendant, his like girl, what? friend um, the, the vehicle that he owns has her blood in it her blood is all over the crime scene he tried to change seats in his vehicle using an employee I mean there are um, the girlfriend is a part of this so my thing is there are three people charged here and and while it's circumstantial they may be able to flip the girlfriend if they could flip the girlfriend or the lawyer I mean that could be Absolute How did that lawyer evidence. get himself in trouble? How did that happen? This is, this, is not the crim this is not the criminal lawyer right, right. that we just saw. This is a civil lawyer, a friend. Yeah. And it's, it's really not clear to me as to why, but he's charged with a conspiracy to commit murder, yeah. not just covering it up. They are alleging that there was an agreement between the husband, the girlfriend, and the lawyer all to commit murder. Wow. So if they flip one of those, then yeah, it could be circumstantial. They may not have a weapon, but guess what? If you have a witness to the conspiracy, well, then that's going to be very important. You say this affidavit reads like a crime novel. It does, How? because it details the step-by-step -step investigation. And th these, these investigators went through forensics. The forensics is going to be very, very difficult to explain. How is he going to say how her blood got all over his vehicles? They also have uh, evidence being discarded. They have him dumping bags. They have him on video changing license plates. I mean, so that's all circumstantial and it all goes to him. I'm wondering what was the participation of the lawyer? The lawyer is yeah. the one that's still in jail. It's also, I mean, let's go back to motive, too, because all this started over money, as right. so many of these things do. Yeah, divorce, too. I mean, the, these are individuals that are being divorced, and, and I'm a former homicide prosecutor myself, and we would say in the office, today's domestic violence is tomorrow's murder. And yes, this is uh, an issue. It's money, too. It's not only just divorce. It's not fighting over the children. It is five a... Five of them now. Five. Out of That's the saddest part of this case. You're a defense, it's the murder. You're a defense attorney. Yes. How do you defend him? Well, pro prosecutors are going to have to make a very, very important decision. Do they use the co-defendants, like I said? There's also another saying, he who calls the co-defendant loses. Because if, let's say they flip the girlfriend, the girlfriend's on the stand, he's going to try to probably point the finger at the girlfriend and say, it wasn't me, it was the girlfriend. She may have just as much motive as him to kill the wife. So I don't know how they're going to defend the blood evidence is going to be a very difficult task. This attorney who comes out and says he's relieved, he better have uh, something up his sleeve because the forensics is so strong in this case, I think it's going to be his downfall. Bruno, thank you for your time. Thank you. Defense attorney here in the studio. Thank you. Pleasure.